I have been waiting and waiting and waiting to do this on the show for a long time. OTR has always been the underdog in the world of sports broadcasting. We will go where other shows fear to tread. Call them as we see them and always try to be original. And today is original to say the least. This guy is original. Wrestler, fighter, scrapper, excellent guest in the show, Gaza Coleman. Nice to see you, Gaze. How you doing, Mike? Can you do me a favor? Sure, what's Take that? your foot down and have some respect, man. Oh, ready? Have some respect for the legend beside oh. you. The most influential voice in heavy metal history. These guys helped define the 80s, and he is now back in a big way. Great to welcome former Judas Priest lead singer and now a solo artist who's going to start his tour tomorrow night in Toronto, Rob Halford. Nice to see you, Rob. Hey, Mike. And thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Great to welcome this, this guy to the show. His name is Kevin Zegers. Now, your director from uh, your latest movie, which is Most Valuable Player, or Most Valuable Primate, excuse I mean, yeah. me, said that you are going to be a major star. You're a good kid from Woodstock, and we're really happy to have you here today. Nice, nice to, to see you. Thanks. And you are on X-Files. You'll tell me some stories later? Yeah, I will. All right. <laughs> today, clamps, forceps, suction. Looks like the Expos are bleeding talent once again. And if marketing power was as important as a big serve, they'd be calling Pistol Pete sawed-off Sampras. And tonight, you can hear the call from Dennis Miller. Al, that was the worst executed play since the Lee Harvey Oswald prison transfer. But first of all, there has never been a player like Allen Iverson. We have fun here, don't we? We do. A short-sighted public may think that it's his tattoos and his piercings that make him unique. But his true uniqueness is the fact that he is an absolutely dynamic player. He is the shortest player in NBA history to win a scoring title. The Sixers, though, are trying to barter his badass, and somehow they aren't finding much interest. The reason is pretty simple. Teams are scared of his off-court demeanor. Be the general manager here for me. Would you guys take a chance on a guy who could win a scoring title and also give your coach a bleeding ulcer? It's all about how good you are. It's all about how well you play. I mean, the, the, the peripheral stuff, the personality, all the excessiveness, all the, the crazy stuff, is, uh, is just a side issue. It's what happens when you get out there. And, but the and side the issue is also part of the package, and it's also part of what you have to put up with. I mean, if you're looking to bring your team up and give them a good image and, and, and attract sponsors and people, you, you, you don't want to bring someone. I mean, I've got a few tattoos myself, and I would understand you, you don't want to bring, well, someone who looks like a street kid or a gang member to your team. I mean, I wouldn't want them. I, think that's, I mean, that's it might be a bit of a though. troublemaker. I mean, it, it could be just superficial, but I, I wouldn't want the trouble of having him on my team. He's got, to where, he's got to where he is because of his talent, and that's all that really matters. As long as he does his job well, that's, that's well, the end of it. It doesn't matter how he dresses in the change. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, talent, talent's got a lot to do with it, but there's... It has everything know, to do with it. That's what he's there for. He's there to play it, basketball. It's not everything not because, look. you know, there, there's more to... I mean, the, they're in the public eye, so the press is going to want to know what he does outside of the game. What does he do outside the league? Well, Who the press is going to find something with? bad about him no matter whether he has tattoos and goes out partying so I or whether he's I mean, if they're going to find something bad about him no matter what, why bring, why bring more trouble to your city? But, well, but, but Gaze is making an, an, an a good point, I think, in the sense that chemistry is a factor and people do have to get along. I mean, Rob, if you could get the greatest musician in history in your band, mm -hmm. but he was a jerk mm -hmm. and he ruined chemistry and guys hated his guts, you'd fire him, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would, but, but I think you, you really have to overlook that. I mean, uh, all teams are, are, are a combination of lots of idiosyncrasies, lots of personalities. There's conflict in every situation, and you've just got to work through that and, and just go for the common goal, you know. You've got to get over it. I mean, there's no But the no thing is, you, you no also got to take a, a chance whether you want to take that chance or not. Well, what if you bring him to your team and, and there's absolutely no one that gets along with him? What the hell do you do with him then? You've already signed him to well, a is contract. That is, that, is that what's going on? Is that He's what's going on with this guy? He's fans, though, too. I mean, he's not just no question about people, that. I mean, they sell out every game. In you ask what's going on with him. The single biggest thing is the fact that Larry Brown, his coach, and he don't see it eye to eye. And, and his point, through all of his actions and through all of his body language and through the way his body looks, is pretty simple. He's saying this: I'm special. I'm better than all of these other players. And if I come to play and play better, I deserve special treatment. Does he? Yes, I think so. I think, I think again, if, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, I don't, I don't think you, you can you, give special bring, treatment to just one player. When you bring a guy I mean, onto it, a team, that's, that's something that you talk about. You sit, you sit across the table like we're talking now and you discuss these issues. He obviously got through that, that side of it. He got through that element. He got through the chit-chat of this is the way I look, this is the way I behave, this is the way I act. The, the guy's got a job. The guy does what he does. He does it well. All right, I want to take this to football now because you guys have each made your point and you've all made it very well. 
National Football League. One of the biggest stories I think that exists right now is the St. Louis Rams and their quarterback, Kurt Warner. He was the MVP last year in the Super Bowl. He was the MVP during the regular season. He did everything. But the thing that he does more than anyone is thank God. That seems to be uppermost in his mind, and that seems to be the biggest story. He's the opposite of Allen Iverson. Do you have any more problem or less problem with him because he's espouting a different philosophy than Iverson is? Well, that's an interesting point because you get just as many people cringing when people say, well, the reason I got this trophy is all about God, you know? I think, again, it's all about give and take. It's about, all about respecting people for who they are, how they look, the way they behave, as long as, as, well, long you're not as really, it works you're really not gonna, you know, it, it almost seems You're not going to get someone not take someone because they're spewing out things about God. I mean, that's Do you his. mind the National Football League giving him a platform to give his views on, on God? Do you mind him taking that and saying, you shoved a microphone in front of my face because you wanted to know what route my wide receiver was running. But I'm going to take the opportunity to say, thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I think that's actually up to the league whether they want him to Does do that Does it bother you not. that he uses the platform that way? Uh, no, me it doesn't. I mean, for each their own, I guess, in that aspect. I mean, if he was going to spew out about you know, thank the Lord, and, you know, hey, good for him. I mean, if that's what floats his boat and, you know, helps him sleep at night, that's... Yeah, but they wouldn't air it if it was another, if it was something else. I mean, if it was... Well, the thing is, he's taking the, the opportunity of the majority of people are Catholic out in the, in, the, in the world. I mean, that's just the majority. So, of course, they air it because the majority of the viewers are Catholic. So, if something wasn't, quote-unquote, what people want, then that's they're not going to air it. Yeah, but if he was going to, if he was, if he's on live TV and they're asking him a question and he decides to spit well, out what he wants, he could also spit out, you know, thank, thank the, the is, uh, great Elijah Muhammad or but they uh, wouldn't, they, one of the other obscure religions. You I don't think even that, know. You think that they would, one of the obscure religions? Well, like, I if you're not like a top <laughs> five religion, you know? Well, yeah, you know, if you're not it. top five, you're obscure, If you, you know? don't listen to Casey Kasem, you don't find what the, the <laughs> top five religions are every week. I, I like, I do that's like I said, they wouldn't air it. Rob, do you think, think do you think that it would be just as accepted if he if he was a Muslim and and he shouted out, "Except my God and America's the devil"? Uh, probably not. No, I think. That, Did again, you ever shout that out, "America's uh, the devil"? No, but I might do that just now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact is that um, the fact is that uh, he's obviously got such a such a solid faith and. And part of uh, part of people that have such a solid faith, like he obviously does, is that he takes every opportunity to to speak up uh, uh, about his beliefs. Excellent. So, should we give him one of these? Get, is it a double? Oh <laughs> my God! I can't believe I just screwed it up. I got Rob Halford here, and I went like this. What the heck is that? I think I'm showing my roots. When they said be like Mike, they meant Michael Jordan. So why do half the athletes out there think they meant Michael Jackson? Next on OTR. Battle your children, yo, time after time when you rhyme is not intelligent. Roars acting hard, be the scores that be hesitant. You know, since the day Howard Cosell left Monday Night Football, they've been looking to fill this guy's spot. The thing about Monday Night Football was that it was always different. Forget the X's and O's. This was always about personality. Well, tonight they begin their new season with their boldest attempt to be different. Comedian Dennis Miller will be in the broadcast booth. Pretty simple question. Do you like that call? It's way better than Rush Limbaugh. Well, I think they're going to find out quickly. I mean, you know... Whether his style, I mean, is he is he going to be like he is on stage? I don't think you're going to hear a lot of uproar from the players because I think a lot of them, you know, they're very uh, fragile egos. And if he starts bashing on them really good, I, I don't think he'll be around for too long. Well, it's better than what they have now. I mean, now it's just they call the plays and say, you know, what know. their percents are and all that. But it was, like, and it was like Michael said up in the green room. I mean, their, their ratings have been going down, but they're still the most watched football game. People will always religiously get together on Monday nights, eat chicken wings, get drunk, and watch Monday night football. So whether it's, it's, it's crappy personalities who are doing the commentating, or they yeah, got someone good, you should always strive to do it better. It's the entertainment value. Well, it's, it's the entertainment exactly. Value if he gets another bring in. Does it cheapen the, the game. The game's the game. The game is there. We're all going to watch the game, right? And people are going to sit around like we're sitting around, and they're going to opinionate and talk. I, about I this, just think we're going to—it's—it's going to be found out quickly whether he's going to well, stick around. Well, if they put him out in like a wide receiver's uniform and threw him out there, it'd be different. It's not affecting the game that much. I mean, they're still going to go out and play their game no matter what. I think whether he's common, it's going to be mean, a lot more fun. I think the guy's really smart. I think he's got a good mouth. He's got a good brain. I think he's going to make it a, a, a really, a really interesting thing to watch. When you're not watching the game, you want to keep, you know, focused on the on the box. So 
I think well, he's going to be doing the job. Yeah, and if he gets 10 I, I'm million. not saying that he can't do a good job. I'm just saying we're going to find out quickly whether the players but, are going to like you, but his... But the issue is not... I mean, cares? yes, what you're saying is we will find out. But the key to this show is not saying, well, let's just wait and see what happens. The key is making your evaluation, is it a good call? And do you think it's a good call to put a comedian in the broadcast booth or as an athlete, at one time, does it cheapen the sport? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mike, at least I could say I was an athlete. <laughs> I don't even think you got that claim to fame. But I, I don't, okay, honestly, in opinion, I think, sure, let's throw him in there. You know, it ain't, do we, do it ain't, we know it what he knows? Do we know I mean, what it's he like knows Rob, you did say, he is smart. He knows what you and I know, I've watched Rob. his, I've watched his specials, and it, it's not a, it's not a, I don't know what they call like a blue humor, you know, mm -hmm. like he doesn't just, uh, he actually, his humor makes you think. Mm -hmm. And you got to sit there and you got to pay attention. And, and sometimes you don't get it because, you know, maybe you're not up to the current issues or he, the current he, topics of what's he going may, on, he but he is. Start, he may start opening his mouth and, and, and be a sports encyclopedia. The guy is smart. Right, well, he's, he's he knows never... what you and I know. Mm -hmm. You're a basketball fan, right? A big basketball fan. You were a season sub ticket subscriber to the Phoenix Suns. Mm -hmm. You now live in San Diego. You follow your Lakers. You probably know what Dennis Miller knows. Mm -hmm. And I would find it interesting to hear your perspective on stuff. But I might be real pissed off if I was an athlete on the playing field going, why what is, is he it, saying What does it matter, anything? though? I mean, they're playing the game. They're not paid to question what the, the commentators are saying. They're, they're there to play football or basketball or whatever. So. Uh, and let's face it, we've pampered our athletes over the years. I mean, we, oh, we have time. no problem with a comedian coming into the political forum and poking fun at our politicians. But it seems like sport has always been, for some reason, sacred. Yeah, but then again, we, you know, uh, how many sports people are getting into my business? You know, I mean, everybody's uh -huh. doing everything else. Everybody's, like, jumping into each other's... You're scenario. a Lakers fan. What do you, so what do you make Shaq, of... Look at Shaq in his movie stuff. Look at Shaq in his... Uh, what do you make of that, record stuff. I think it's cool. He's a great player. He just goes on there and just blitzkriegs up and down the court. And he's the best at what he does. Well, so if he does that I on think the when outside, it comes to that, he people need to always, game, that's fine. Like rappers, you know, they want to play basketball. Basketball players want to rap. I mean, I, I think it just comes down to, you know, the grass always looks greener on the other side of the fence. You know what I mean? They just think, oh, hey, I may be successful at this, but that would be awesome. I mean, they probably get together, you know, like a rapper and a basketball player, and they're both complimenting each it's other. It's not affecting his it's game. It's like, what you do is awesome. And, oh, what you do is great. Yeah, but, oh, oh, and it just goes back and forth. So, I mean, you're going to get... Okay, hold on. You don't oh, let the kid talk, you know. It's it's no, not. He's just got to speak up. I know. I'm not that loud. Um, it doesn't affect his game, though. I mean, it's not like he raps during the season or, like, I mean, Delahoy hasn't. Well, won I'm not a fight talking for... about it affecting his game. It's just they always look at something else. You know what I mean? Well, well how about a guy? Like, got, I, I was a wrestler and I looked at. I watched fighting on TV and I was like, oh man, that stuff's violent. That's some crazy. Shit. A year ago or a year later. I was in there myself fighting. I never would have thought of that. But that's aspiration. It's not like he's doing anything. I'm, I don't know if you said he's doing anything wrong, but I mean, he's just... No, it's just you're you always looking at something else. Like, you may be doing something, but then there's always going to be something else. What do you make of a guy like Oscar De La Hoya? You say it doesn't affect Shaq's game. That may or may not be true, but Oscar De La Hoya, without question, his career has been hurt. He's lost his last two fights, and his career has been hurt because he's more worried about looking pretty and marketing his prettiness than he is about his ability. Well, he's got he's a true. Up. I don't think that's true. I think, that, I think, I think Oscar he, he goes in that ring pussy. to win, but he, he, he's got to go in that ring to win. I mean, nah. nobody wants to go in there and be humiliated. You know, he, he's got the eyes of the world on him, and, okay, so he's got this monumental ego about how he looks, how he dresses, how he acts, whatever. But the moment that really matters is when he's in that ring boxing. But he's got to be also said on TV, he's getting punched. You can, yeah, you I can mean, tell by you know, the way he fights. You can, yeah, you can tell by the way he fights. He's lost twice now. I mean, he's, he he's, he's, he's got to start. Better. He's got to start stepping up. And I mean, you're going to start stepping up and going against stiffer competition. You're going to start to get hit. You're going to collect bruises and scars. You know what? If, if he's worried about his looks, retire now and go do movies or commercials or something. Get out of the yeah, sport. Yeah, because you can tell by the way he fights. He, he dances around the guy and just waits for him to drop his guard. I or mean, whatever. he was a phenomenal fighter. I mean, he still is. I mean, you know, for a little guy he is, he'd kick my ass. But you know, he's scrappy. He's he he should just get out. You know, get out while he's still got do, his looks. A lot of people do a lot of soul searching. The the the, the, the higher you go the further you advance, things are always changing. You know when you start doing what we all start doing? We start at, at the dream level. We look at what, what's there. I love music, you love acting, you love extreme fighting. We look at it on a very simple, pure level. And then, once you start to get the notoriety, once you start to get the success, all of the other stuff starts to pour in. The door starts knocking, the phone starts ringing, and it's a very subjective situation. Things start coming at you in your brain that you would never have conceived of. 
So it, it's See, a growing, it's a growing environment, and you have to make sense of it. What you got to do is throw all that away and say, "What am I? I'm a boxer. What am I? I'm a singer. What am I?" I'm See, I can, I excellent can point. Oh. Words from, oh, uh. you didn't like it that I cut you off? No. He had things to You'll say. have your oh, chance. Have to say. You've heard them say all the time, yeah. "Kill the ump. How about fire the ump?" That's next when OTR returns. Well, to update you on the latest breaking news, Gaze Coleman now has two feet up on the table, which is an oh. OTR record. Some guys have put one, but you've Sorry. gone with two. Uh, All right, Lennox, and I asked you early in the show, show a little respect uh, for the legend. I'll All show right. respect for him, but I got none for you, buddy. Okay, that's, oh. fair. That's, that's fair. I never asked for any. All right, the only fight that people really want these days in boxing, in terms of the big picture, is Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson. And the truth is, it has nothing to do with Lennox Lewis. It's all about Tyson. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, every, everyone's thinking, everyone's comparing the two. And I mean, you know, it's, it's not even a situation where Lennox has got to put up or shut up. I mean, this is like, everyone's like, oh, you know, like, no matter what Lennox Lewis does, they'll always compare him to Mike Tyson. And could Mike they... Tyson actually build back through the ranks and actually become a champion again at the level he was at? No. I think this is his only opportunity. But I, I don't think the public knows that. Off. I don't think the public knows if he can still fight or not. I mean, he's all, all he's fought are some guys in they Europe. Don't care. Hold on, let me jump in and redirect this. The fact is that, Rob, you made a fortune from marketing male aggression, correct? Do you have a problem with this happening in the ring? It's all about catering to people's lowest instinct. There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And that's that. what Tyson's all about, right? But he's a fighter. He's a great fighter. He's not a great fighter anymore. I think anymore. he's a great fighter. I think he's still he was a great fighter. He was a great fighter. Now he's a great, fighter, 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 he's he's a great marketing tool. I mean, but you could still make money off putting Tyson on the main event of any card. And I think you because know, he's a freak show. Because no, it's, it's all not. about the fact well, that people don't he's, know what's yeah, going to happen. Take a while the controversy again. And what have you got left? He's a good fighter. Thank you. You he think was so? A good I think, no, I think he still is a good fighter. I don't care what people say. He's but, but isn't it all about, isn't the fascination with Mike Tyson the fact that, that as boxing fans, we love the fact that he could snap and kill someone? That, but it doesn't also, even have to happen during the three minute rounds. It could be after the <laughs> bell rings. I mean, it is awesome. It doesn't I mean, matter, though. That's the fascination with Mike Tyson. I, I think, you know, that, and, and his biggest marketing tool right now is his mouth. That's what's making him his money, it's what's making him his millions. Shooting off his mouth, challenging this guy, Fighting like people. challenging Lennox Lewis. I, I think, you know, unfortunately for Lewis, if he never fights him, people will never give him the respect he, he should have. I don't know if he for wants what to eat he's his accomplished. Kids, but isn't 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 ultimate fighting, if you look at that, wasn't that the first step towards maybe the ultimate direction, which would be a full circle, and that's people dying in the ring. I don't think ultimate fighting was first brought out as 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 a sport to where people look like, oh I well, okay, yes. <laughs> okay, sorry. You're right. People could die in the ring, but that, that could happen anywhere. Originally, when the anywhere. sport began, that, that could was happen the, anywhere. That the, could happen in lawn that, that, that could happen, you know, in baseball. Guy gets beamed off the head. It could happen in football. It could yeah. happen in any sport. But ultimate fighting, I, I don't believe right now it, it is a sport. Absolutely. There are so many 100%. Rules. I'm not disagreeing. But isn't Back the then, love, it wasn't a sport. But That's when it started, why it was better. wasn't it the bloodlust that really made that sport successfully to begin That's with? That's why people watch it. I don't know if. That's why people, I mean, I think that I, that's I don't know. what it is. It's, you know, there's just that element, there's that element of, sense of uncertainty of whether there's going to be something really fatal and horrible going to happen. It's like when people go to I mean, a, that, that a race car the, meeting, you know, people go there waiting for a car to get the last one. That's right. But, that's right. But, but, I, but, I Ooh. mean, is <laughs> Rob. You're always giving him the last word. Okay. Hey, I'm interested no in to hear what he's got to say. Let us know what you got to say. Any show I've Michael, ever been I'm going to start up the Michael Landsberg oh. fan club. Please don't use my name because I don't want my friends to know that I'm a fan of yours. Thanks. Hey, it's okay. You know, it's okay to come out. Come out and say, Bryce, I'm a fan of Landsberg. OTR, leave my husband alone. That's from Judy Fergus. Her husband, well, Tom, was on the show. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The most ass oh. I've ever seen you kiss of any guest on a show. And I haven't I've touched yours, oh. have I? And I never will. There's our website. There's the our email. Word. There's our fax number. Well, no one's saying it's right. The owners would probably love it, but that's wrong. The fact is, right now, it's gone. The owners had all the control here. Today, the players have all the control. That's why salaries are getting out of hand with the escalating salaries and everything. We need to bring it 
to the middle. Zegers, thanks so much for joining us on the no show. Problem. I thought you did a great it's job. Nice to be here. So your movie is called Most Valuable Primate. Yeah. And it's out August 11th. And it's it's about monkeys on skates, right? It is about monkeys on skates. I'm just there filling in the blanks. And that opens across Canada, right? On August yeah, 11th. Yeah, August 11th. It opens October in the states, I think. And uh, you, you've appeared in X Files, right? How mm -hmm. cool was that? That was cool. Also, uh, Life with Mikey. Life with Mikey. And, and you're still living fun. in Woodstock, Ontario. I still live in Woodstock, Ontario. Go yeah. out and become a big star. Thank you. And come back and see nice us. Nice to okay? be here. Thanks. Stay there. Don't move to LA. No. No. Mm -mm. San Diego's cool though. Stay. Stay solid. Yeah. Rob, I hold uh, in my hand your new CD, right? Mm -hmm. uh, solo effort yep. for uh, Rob Halford, and you begin your tour, which is worldwide, tomorrow night at the Air Canada Centre, right? We do, with Iron Maiden from the UK, Entombed from Sweden. It's going to be a raucous show. This is all over the planet. Right, so it's Air Canada Centre tomorrow night, and it's Halford a Resurrection. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you, sir. Nice to meet you, too. How's that for sucking up, Gaza? <laughs> it's a pretty good job. You, you protesting? <laughs> no, no, no. Let me tell you this. Okay. You... I've never seen more of your chest than I saw today. Thanks for joining us. <clears throat> hey, no problem. You want to say hi to someone fast? Uh, yeah, fast. I just want to say hi to Neil down at Diamonds Bar and Grill in Windsor. If you're ever in Windsor, you go there because they're the greatest rooms.